fly box. Today we're going to tie a sculpinator, an articulated fly pattern. We are uh, featuring a couple of products, some metal heads for the head and trailer hitch hooks for the articulation, a shank and a back hook. So we're just going to start with the back hook. Um, this is a size six and we're using six out thread. We'll attach our thread and build a little thread base. And the back hook is really just a woolly bugger. So I've got, we're gonna do uh, this brown or rust color. So I want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank like that. And once I have that, I'm holding up my right hand. I'm just gonna pinch it with my left hand and then I can snip off the excess leave a little bit out the front there that I can capture with my thread and tie it down. We're going to tie it down just directly above the barb of the hook. So it's out there like that. All right, now we're going to take our strung hackle. So I just got regular old brown strung hackle. And we'll get us a nice, nice piece here. Hold it by the tip and we'll pull back some of these hackle fibers give us a, a little section there that we can tie in. So we're gonna tie it in by the tip. Okay, so we can snip off the excess out the front. And now for the body, we have some cactus chenille. That gives us a good shimmer. I'm going to actually pull back some of those fibers. I got a little string out the front. And we'll tie that down. Just tie it down right down against the base of the tail. And then let's advance our thread to the eye of the hook. And we'll start with the cactus chenille. I'm going to wrap that over the top away from us. Trying to make nice, even wraps as we go. And once we reach the eye of the hook, we can hold that straight up in the air with our right hand. We'll drop our thread over with our left hand about three times. And now we can snip off that excess. All right, let's just pull some of those, that crystal back out of the way and, and just build a little thread base right there. Now we can take our hackle and we're going to just wrap that through woolly bugger style. And repeat that same step. Hold it with our right hand, drop our thread over with our left hand, and now we can trim off that excess. All right, let's just pull back everything again. Clean up around the eye of the hook. Put a nice little thread base right there. And we can whip finish. So there's the back half of this fly. And we can move on to the front half. So let's put a little head cement or super glue right there, UV glue. I'm just going to hit it with a little zappa gap that you guys got in your box. Okay, now we're ready to attach the trailer hitch. So we've got the, the front shank. You just pop it through the eye of the hook like that. And now we're going to reposition this into our vise. And this can be a little tricky. There's a little dip there in the hitch. And that's what we're going to try to put in the jaws of our vise right there, like that. So it's really pretty simple and easy to do with articulation instead of doing wire and beads and all that. Uh, and it works really well and it, it swims really good. So now we'll attach our thread in the front and climb it up on there and close that hitch down. We've got nice uh, 
nice thread base that lays down right along there. I like to just hit that again with a little um, zapper ga gap just to keep things from sliding around and adds a little durability there. All right, now essentially we're gonna repeat those same steps up to the, uh, the front. So we'll go back with our marabou. Again, about the little bit shorter. And it's probably a good idea to let that zap bit gap dry somewhat before you lay your fingers down there. You might glue yourself to this fly. And we'll come back with the strung hackle. Again, by the tip. Snip off that little tip. Now what I'm gonna do on the front is I'm actually gonna, uh, notice I got a little hump on the back. So let's lay down our crystal chenille, our cactus chenille along the hook shank and just helps even out that underbody and come right back. Now the front of this fly, we're gonna, we're gonna stop about two eye lengths back. We just need to keep that somewhat free for the sculpin head. So let's just be mindful of that as we tie this woolly bugger section. there in the front. We'll tie that down. Get all those whiskers back out of the way. Get a little thread base like that. All right now I'm just building a little thread base trying to keep just behind the eye a little clean there. And now let's take some dubbing. You can use a dubbing loop, depending on how big you want this. This is just some uh, semi seal Arizona and Halloween. I'm just gonna dub this uh, like normal. It's not a huge area. I'm just gonna take a pretty good section here of dubbing. and just build up a ball basically right there. If you got a few strays, that's okay. We like that. Leave a little, some of it a little loose. And go a little more. So really I'm just building up a, a pretty good ball. Notice I don't advance it too far in front because I want this metal head that we have to sit right up pretty close to that. Okay. All right, now if you have a little brush or a comb or something, a dubbing brush, let's just pick this out. We're gonna really bug this out. because I want it to be a little thicker. Give it some, some bugginess there. All right, now what I've done with the metal head is I've pre-glued on the eyes like that. Before we do that, let's uh, whip finish. We're gonna slide that right up over so it sits just like that, okay? So let's uh, let's glue that. I'm gonna put a pretty good little ball of glue 
right up on that thread Oops. and push it back on there like that. Let's just hold it for a second and allow that to just kick. Now what I'm going to do also is uh, let's build a little thread dam just in front. So we're going to reattach our thread and just build up just a pretty good little ball of thread. Let's clip that off really close. And cover that up so we get a nice, nice little dam that just helps lock that in place and finishes the fly off. So we'll now just whip finish. And then I'm gonna come back with my Zappa gap. Back with the Zappa gap and, and or if you had UV glue, that would work great as well. And that's it. Sculpinator, so it it swims fairly erratic. The shape of this head, it'll it'll flutter sideways and kind of ride itself back up. So it really swims pretty erratic with that trailer hitch, and it really moves around really good and out the back. And uh, the head, it gives it just enough weight, really for most trout streams. I've I've had good luck with bass with this too. Like smallmouth will hit it. It's got a little bit of a croft crayfish feel to it as well. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get a chance to fish it this fall.